Hello, my name is Alexandros Balonis. I am project manager in operational marketing department in Teltonica. Welcome to Bluetooth Low Energy Sensors and their use case scenario webinar. Our team makes a cycle of webinars to tell you more about our solution and usage possibilities. The last webinar was about stolen vehicle recovery. If you didn't participate, you have a possibility to watch it on our official YouTube channel. Our company's motto is Easy Key to IoT. We create products and solutions that are easy to use, install and configure. Our goal is to give possibilities to use our solution to as many clients as possible so they could accelerate their business. There are two types of Balea devices. First, sensors. They send value. Today we talk about temperature, combined temperature and humidity, magnetic, and movement sensors. There are two types of sensors, point and puck. The difference is in battery size and a signal sending distance. Second group is beacons. They send only ID. There are three types of beacons. Point, hook and slim. All sensors have IP68 protection. Combined temperature and humidity sensor have IP65 protection because there is membrane. Slim AD has no IP protection. Let's talk about hardware and software. Here you see all our tracking devices that have Bele support. It is important to use this firmware and turn on Codec 8 Extended. Today we release new base firmware version for FMB and FMT series devices that have Belea beacons and sensors functionality added. We highly recommend to update firmware even for those clients who are already using Belea beacons and sensors. Let's talk about price. Wired sensor price is about 5 euros. Wireless sensor price is about 25 euros. This depends on sensor's type and quantities. How to explain to customer why it is worth to invest more money in a wireless solution? It is very simple. Very often cheap things have a hidden expenses. Now I want to show you how trailer refrigerator looks like inside. Then we talk about Belea advantages and after that we will compare prices. There it is. On top of the door you see wired magnetic sensor. Installation took several hours because there was demand to dismount walls, put cables and protections, then put back all walls again. This type of installation is very invasive. Took a lot of time, can impact warranty and price in aftermarket. Now let's talk about advantages. First advantage is fast installation. We have information from several installers that one wired sensor takes to install about one and a half, two hours. If you need to install four sensors, it takes about four hours. One work hour by skilled specialist costs about 50 euros. It depends on country and varies from 30 to 130 euros per hour. Also, you need additional materials like holders, protections, metallic connection holders that very often is damaged and need to be replaced. Balea solution installation took only 5 minutes. Second advantage is easy installation that can be done by driver or even manager. Third advantage is easy replacement because very often wire sensors cables are damaged or broken so you need to replace or repair it. It takes a lot of time and the problem is that car doesn't work several hours. Fourth advantage is error elimination. To install wired sensors we need a very skilled installer because not skilled person often make mistakes. 
Belay sensors don't have such a problem because installation is very simple. And fifth advantage is cheap installation. Fast and simple installation that took up to 5 minutes and make price of work very cheap. So let's help to our client make a good decision. And now, after all calculations that contains materials and work hours, the situation is quite different. The cheap solution at the beginning after adding additional cost now is more expensive, about two and a half times. We see very big potential in that type of solutions. They can help us extend existing solutions and open new niches. Let's talk about use case scenarios. Most classical solution is driver recognition. We need to install a FM device and have beacon for driver ID. There is possibility to use immobilizer scenario, then driver can start engine without recognition. Very often truck has two drivers, so you can sell two beacons. Old chain use case is very important. Here we can use driver ID, temperature observation, important for use with food a special sensor with EN 12800 30 certification. Also, we can notice when door is open or closed with magnetic sensor. If there is expensive cargo, we can trace each box using beacons. This is helpful when we need to know when the box left the trailer. Beacons can be used for indoor tracking in large warehouses or similar areas where GPS signal is unavailable. Tracker receives Bluetooth signals from beacons installed in the area and sends the signal strength measurement with beacon ID to the server. From server side, you will be able to monitor connected beacon ID and Bluetooth signal level, so it is possible to recognize tracker location by predicted beacons location. This solution consists of two parts, BLAE and fleet management device, which performs gateway function and send data to the server. We can also track passengers. Most often, two scenarios are school children and workers track. In the first scenario, it is important to know if the driver has picked all the children up. The second scenario is actual because nowadays a lot of production type companies has their offices up to 50 kilometers from town, so they need to track if all the employees has been picked up from the bus stops by the driver. We can watch non-motorized equipment, like generators, trailers or lifting mechanisms. This solution is suitable for factories, airports, railroads and etc. This solution consists of two parts. BLAE and fleet management device, which performs gateway function and sends data to the server. There are a lot of usage possibilities in the construction field. We can use it for the monitoring of expensive tools like generators. With beacons, we can observe employee's movement that allows to know if employee is in restricted area. Construction is a very dangerous place. If the evacuation is needed, we can be sure that all workers leave the dangerous area. This solution consists of two parts. BLAE and fleet management device, which performs gateway function and sends data to the server. We can use beacons in office instead of RFID cards. Most significant advantage is information about the employee location. And if the evacuation is needed, you will always know that all employees leave the office and are safe. This solution consists of two parts, BLE and fleet management device, which performs gateway function and sends data to the server. In the beginning, I told about new niches. This is a very good example. Ten years ago, nobody would think about that type of solution. We have a lot of galleries, so we can put movement sensor on the picture frame. And if somebody touches the frame, the security gets alarm notification. We must understand that this type of security solution is not suitable for paintings like Mona Lisa. 
They have a special security system. This solution consists of two parts, LAE and a fleet management device, which performs gateway function and sends data to the server. So now I take a pause and my colleague Paulus show configuration tool. Hello everyone, so this is Paulus. I'm a technical support engineer at Altanica. So today I will show you on uh, the most important and recommended uh, steps to go through when configuring your device to use BLE. So we go, we open the newest configurator that can be downloaded from our wiki or client FTP. You go to create new configuration and you select the device that you will be using for your sensors or beacon solutions. So for example, in this case, let, let's take the most popular device, FMV 920 BLE. You select the newest firmware version and configuration version in the configurator. So let's start from the Bluetooth settings. So we go to the Bluetooth tab and we have to check if Bluetooth is enabled. In the Bluetooth tab, if the Bluetooth is disabled, you won't be able to use either the Bluetooth 3 or Bluetooth 4 uh, functions. So it has to be set on either enable hidden or enable visible. Then we go to Bluetooth 4. So these are the Bluetooth 4 or uh, otherwise known as uh, BLE settings. Uh, so our recommended settings would be to non-stop scan set as disabled and set the update frequency as 30 seconds and the BLE scan duration as 30 seconds. And then we have the connectionless functionalities. So these are your sensors configurations. So we have the working modes, uh, which is the disabled, TZPD sensors or advanced. So in most cases, you will be using the advanced uh, mode because this allows you to use any kind of sensor from any kind of manufacturer. So I will show you how to, for example, configure an ELA temperature sensor. So we select connection one, we go to choose the uh, setting advanced and we choose the preset for LA temperature uh, sensor, which can be found in the presets, preset selection. Then we select the preset and set and press load. So as you can see, there are a lot of presets made for different kinds of sensors and the, it's possible to add more of those presets according to your uh, use cases. So for example, if you have some kind of sensor uh, that you would like to use, you can always uh, contact your sales manager or can contact our technical support and ask how a specific sensor can be configured. However, we would need to have the protocol for that sensor to be able to configure it. So in this case, I have configured the L temperature sensor and as you can see, the temperature data will be saved to the IO element temperature. To uh, enable the sensor, you also have to enter the MAC address of the sensor. So uh, the MAC address can be found out either through the uh, ELA app uh, or through any kind of other phone or uh, laptop application that can scan nearby VLE devices to find out the MAC address of the sensor. After enabling the sensor and setting the MAC address and the uh, preset, we go to the IO elements. So in this case, since we configured an LA temperature sensor, we have to enable the BLE temperature one uh, IO element to receive data to the server. So after this is done, the device will send temperature data for the first sensor to the server, which it receives from the sensor. The other functionality of our devices that uses PLE is beacon list or otherwise as the beacon functionality. So there are three configuration options, which the first one is disabled, the second one is all, and the third one is configured. <laughs> so if we choose the uh, beacon detection of all, that means that the device will scan for all nearby uh, BLE devices that use the iBeacon or Ediston protocol. So if the uh, nearby BLE device uh, transmits its data using the iBeacon or Ediston protocol, our device will be able to detect it and send its data to the server. All of the protocols and how the data sending uh, looks like, you can find the instructions either on our Teltonica web site or on our wiki. If you're using the configured option, 
the device will only look for and send information from device, devices that are configured in the beacon list. So as you can see in the tooltip, you can configure either iBeacon or Eddystone protocol beacons. So for example, if we want to search only for one specific beacon and send its data to the server, we can configure it as such. So the uh, UID, UID in iBeacons is made out of uh, 16 bytes and the major minor parts are made out of two bytes. So for the UID, you have to enter 16 bytes uh, UID, which can be configured for most, uh, uh, IB, for most beacons, and then enter the major and minor values, which uh, consist of two bytes. So in this, if the sensor is configured, uh, so I missed some bytes in the UID, but you can just copy the UID from your beacon when you're configured. Uh, so if the SMB device is configured as such, the device will only look for this specific beacon and only send, send its, this beacon's data to the server. So where this is useful, it's useful to use with the immobilizer scenario, which is uh, found in the feature stack. So our devices have the immobilizer scenario. There's a video for it on our Teltonica YouTube website, where you can uh, find how it works uh, with uh, one wire, uh, with one wire reader and I button. But in this case, we can configure it uh, to use uh, beacons as authorization. So in this case, we enable the immobilizer scenario, we enable the output control, and check the I button, I button list check option as beacon. So, for example, if you configure only one uh, beacon and set the configuration to configure, the driver will only be authorized to start the vehicle with this specific beacon. If you configure the option as all, then all uh, different beacons that use iBeacon or Edstone will be able to start the vehicle. And that would be all for the configuration part. Thank you, Paulus. Did somebody remember how it looked like our office workspace 10 years ago? Everyone had wired keyboard and mouse. Now everything is wireless. The future of telematic solutions is here, so let's develop it together. I recommend you to get some test devices from your direct managers. Thank you for watching. See you on our next webinar.